Hey, physics students, Mr. Newland here. I am trying to help out in the Einstein writing versus Einstein hanging lab. This lab's really about Einstein's mass in a gravitational sense versus Einstein's mass in an inertial sense. So you see, can see I'm on pivot and I kind of played a little bit of that video. So uh, here's Einstein hanging. Uh, there's a pulley there. So remember, a pulley just redirects the force of a string. So there's a string tied to this cart. This cart has mass. There's not only masses piled on it, but the cart itself has mass. By the way, this whole apparatus up here that the cart is sitting on is creating a low friction air cushion. So uh, it it's like a an air hockey table kind of thing that the cart is riding on. Um, so I'm going to hit play with him snip the thing. You can see him fall in slow-mo. So here I'm asking you to use Newton's second law to determine the acceleration of this system using Newton's second law. So you should draw a free body diagram for Einstein and include all the forces just on Einstein. And when you do that, you'll have uh, one equation that has an acceleration in it. Then you should do, let's go back here where it's still some tension. Then you should do the same thing for the cart. Draw a free body diagram on the cart. And uh, in both cases, you can really just pay attention to the forces happening in the direction of the string. So for example, Einstein, there are no forces left or right. And on the cart, there are no forces up or down that matter. There's an upward force and a downward force, but they're balanced. So it's really just the cart's mass otherwise known as the inertia of the cart, that's keeping Einstein from just falling straight down. So I kind of didn't finish what I was saying, though. You should do a, a free body di diagram for Einstein and come up with an expression for the acceleration, and then do a free body diagram for the cart and come up with a free uh, an expression for acceleration and see if you can't equate the two. And if you know the cart's mass, which is given below, and you know the hanging mass, which is given below, can you figure out Einstein's mass? So one more time, do a free body diagram for Einstein and, and hanging and a free body diagram for the cart and write an expression for the acceleration. And then once you find the acceleration by gathering distance and time, so all you need is the distance and the time. How long is Einstein in the air? So once he's touching the thing, and by the way, this doll of Einstein kind of looks like uh, Rick from Rick and Morty. It just occurred to me right now. But anyway, uh, all you really need to know is from the moment the string is cut, how long was Einstein falling? And from that, you can figure out the acceleration. And then you could figure out Einstein's mass. So that's only half the problem though. So the first thing you needed to do was a free body di diagram for Einstein, then a free body diagram for the cart. And uh, then by finding the acceleration, knowing how far it fell and how long it fell, you can find his mass. Then I'm asking you to compare that to the same exact situation, but Einstein's now writing. So now you're gonna do a free body diagram for the weights and a free body diagram for the card and Einstein and write two expressions for acceleration. You're gonna do the same thing where you measure, I gotta hit play here, where we measure how long and how far the uh, weights fall. Again, don't gather data after the weights are touching the bottom. So I think the weights, because Einstein took up some room, I think the weights can actually fall a few more frames, but it's the same deal. You wanna know how long the cart and the uh, mass were moving. Um, that acceleration can tell you the uh, ex the mass of Einstein when he's writing. And I'm asking you to compare the two masses. They should be very, very similar and then answer some questions about that, right? So in both videos, you're gonna need two free body diagrams, the thing hanging and the thing writing. You're gonna use those two free body diagrams to come up with one expression for the acceleration with all the givens, the masses will all be given other than Einstein's. Then you're gonna find the acceleration by figuring out how long it takes for something to, the whatever the thing is in the video to fall. And then from that, you should be able to do some uh, arithmetic and algebra to find Einstein's mass. So again, in each video, you'll know the hanging mass's weight and the cart's weight. Um, I'll go back to the hanging one. The only difference in each video is whether or not Einstein is doing the gravitational thing like he is in this first video, where Einstein's doing the pulling and the cart is doing the resisting. 
and so that would be his gravitational mass as opposed to his inertial mass where Einstein's doing the resisting and these free weights, well, they're not free, but these weights attached to the end, they're the ones doing the gravity bit. They're the ones pulling and Einstein and his inertia adds to the cart's overall resistance to wanting to move. So that's kind of the point of the videos to, to use inertia versus gravity. And you should end up with values that are pretty close. Um, and hopefully that all makes sense. All right. I'll see y'all soon.